Hey crafty friends, it's Jen from Katahdin Crafts and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am back with another project from Not Too Shabby. Today's card is a spin on another card that I did earlier this month, which was a slimline shaker card, but I had so many elements left that I had made for that card that I did not want them to go to waste. So here is a look at the card that I did earlier, and I will link that video at the end so you can see how I put that together. But I had all of these pieces of paper and the super cute cupcakes and cookies and whoopie pies. I had all of these elements left, so I definitely did not want to waste all of this or put it in a drawer like I often do. So I thought I was going to make another card. So I wanted to show you that you could take the same elements and make a different size card. So this time I'm going to use an A2 rather than a slimline and I'm using scalloped rectangle stackables from Lawn Fawn. I'm taking two of those out and I'm going to line them up to make my shaker card frame. So I am still going to go with a shaker card because I like the way that that looked. And who doesn't like a good shaker card? <laughs> They're lots of fun. I tend to end up getting into like a groove of doing one type of card and right now it happens to be shaker cards. So I am going to make what makes me happy, right? Isn't that what life's about? Making ourselves a little bit happy. So in order to make this frame, I took two of those scalloped rectangles and I'm going to layer them inside of each other. I'm going to just line those up using my eye to get them straight so I have an even frame all the way around and then I'm going to secure it with my purple tape. You can see that I'm just finagling my tape and sliding that in there and then securing that down running it through my die cut machine twice. I'm going to do this twice in order to get more stability to the frame. So the first time and then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to keep that together with that purple tape and then now I have two frames. And I had these cookies and what I'm deeming a whoopie pie. You can find that in my other video that, yeah, I am from Maine and we are the home of the whoopie pie. So that is a whoopie pie in my mind. And so I've already had these colored and I just needed to fussy cut them out in order to make this card. Now I'm gonna make my own background panel today. So I'm starting with a four and four inch by five and a quarter inch card sock panel. I'm gonna layer this with some adhesive and I've already cut the frosted and tufted paper pack into quarter inch strips. I had done that for the other cards, so these were all left over and I didn't wanna waste them. So I'm gonna do the same type of background and now I'm not using any rhyme or reason on my patter, pattern placing. I'm just doing it at a angle all the way up the page and I like to do this because then I don't have to worry about the sizing. You don't have to worry about having a piece that's um, that will fit right straight across. So this is helpful and I'm just going to go from corner to corner and layer all of these pieces. The only thing I am paying attention to is I'm not putting two browns together or two of the same pattern pieces together. That Besides that I really didn't pay much of attention. I didn't have any certain specific pattern and I like that. I like the um, the wackiness of it I guess. And now at this point I, I knew that I was wasting some of these little strips so I thought well why don't I just trim them down a little bit and then at uh, that area where I just needed smaller pieces I could fit those in. So I'm just taking some scissors and trimming that down to get the excess strips to use those again. So I am not being very wasteful, at least with this card, because this paper is really nice. It's really good shiny quality and thick. I love the not too shabby paper pads. So I'm just gonna add the few extras at the end, and then I'm gonna cut down this card panel. Before I cut it though, I push down on all the pieces to make sure that they're nice and secure. And then I'm going to grab out my trimmer this time because I am going to go slightly smaller. I'm going to make this panel to be five inches by three and three quarters. And the way I'm doing that is I'm taking an eighth of an inch off around each side to make it nice and even and to just get those edges nice and crisp. 
So I literally just went around and took about an eighth of an inch off of each, each side. And now I have my pretty background. I really wanted to make this pretty background pop, so I grabbed the next larger rectangle from that same set and die cut that out, which fits perfectly on an A2 regular card panel, five and a quarter, or sorry, five and a half by four and a quarter. So I cut that out and then I'm cutting my acetate slightly smaller than my frame. And I'm gonna adhere those two frames together for some stability. And then I'm going to adhere the acetate behind that. And I'm using my art glitter glue today. This is one of my favorites because of the precision tip. You hear me talking about precision tip glue in many of my videos because I definitely like those the best because of all the little nooks and crannies. And I do like liquid glue because of the wiggle. And same with the acetate. When you put that on, you can have a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, so now we have all the layers ready, and I'm just seeing how it's going to all fit and look together. So I decided that I wanted to bring out the browns a little bit more, so I'm using my E49 marker, and I'm just going to go around the edge of that bottom scalloped piece, and just go about a quarter of an inch and make my own frame. I like doing this process in my cards because of the con um, the color coordination you can get. And I just missed a couple spots, so I'm just going to go around and fix those up. And now it's time to get that shaker ready to go. So I have doubled up some scotch foam tape, then I cut it in thirds, and that gives you the width that you need in order to go around the frame. And I'm just going to fit that around and butt it in as close as I can so the shaker bits can't escape. And I'm taking an anti-static tool and going around the edges so the shaker bits do not adhere to the adhesive in the middle. And now I'm using some Catherine Pooler Romance Sequence Mix. And I didn't want the turquoise ones in there because it didn't quite coordinate with my color scheme. So I'm just going to pick those out. And so I'm adding some grayish seed beads that I had in my stash. And then this little confetti mix is from Honeybee Stamps. It's their Tiki Hut. And I wanted the brown elements in that to bring out that chocolate color again. So I'm just picking those out. It just takes a little bit of time. And this is a little tip that I did not use in this, I should have, is to take a dryer sheet and actually rub them on your hands. And that way it takes the static in so when you're working with your sequins and your beads and stuff, it doesn't stick to you. And I also lightly can take a used dryer sheet and put it on the acetate and that also helps with static electricity. Okay, now we have the shaker all filled and ready to go. And then actually I decided that I needed to put a little bit more of that like very glittery dust in there. So that now it's all ready to go. So I'm just making sure that it's off the edges. And then this time I decided to put a piece of acetate on the back of my shaker because the piece that I was backing it with doesn't fit exactly. So it's easier to flip this over and adhere it and not have to worry about losing all of your pieces. So I'm just fit fitting that on the back. I didn't measure or anything. And then I'm just going to cut around the edges. So that's super simple and easy to do. And now you have a completely enclosed shaker, which it really does make it easier to adhere it to your cards this way. As you can see, nothing is coming out of there, and it's now I can do whatever I need to do with it. And yes, the static is a little bit much, but it is winter in Maine, and yeah, I'm, I touch everything and I'm getting shocks. So we've got a lot of static electricity. So now I'm just going to adhere that base that I made, the card panel that I made to my card frame. And I got a little glue there, so I'm just going to wipe that off, but that will dry um, clear. And now just adding some on the edge of that shaker and adhering that down right on top. But now we can see all that pretty background. And now it's time to add all of our top elements. So I had a couple of these cute cupcakes left and I just had to decide which one I thought would be best. And then a of course I had to choose between the cookies and the whoopie pie. And what I was trying to do uh, the same as my other card, I didn't want to cover up that whole background area because I liked the look of it. 
So that's why I ended up with so many extra pieces to my first card that I could make other cards. So I chose Sprinkled with Love for my sentiment, and I'm just gonna cut around this and make my own little bubble sentiment. Just a little fussy cutting. And then I have to back it up with something. I wanted it to be matted. So I'm gonna take out my R, I believe it's R29 marker. I will show that in just a second. And which co coordinates, oh, RV34, sorry. <laughs> and that coordinated well with that pink. So I'm just gonna lay down a little bit of that Copic ink and then adhere my sentiment on top and then just fussy cut around that and that's how I'm gonna come up with my mat for my sentiment. I cut my card base at eight and a half by five and a half and then I scored it at the four and a quarter mark for my A2 card panel. Right now I'm still playing with my placement of my elements on my card and I was trying to optimize the background as much as I could and this, I did make this card for Happy Valentine's Day, but it does not have to be. This would make a very perfect birthday card or just I miss you friend type of card. Because the Sprinkled with Love actually is not a Valentine's Day set, but I used another sentiment from another set for that. So this has I love cookies and cupcakes, but nothing sweeter than you. Sprinkled with Love, You Bake Me Happy happy birthday and to my sweet friend so really this set is more versatile so you can easily make a birthday card out of this and just to give you a heads up there's only a couple more of these sets left in the not too shabby shop so i would run to get them because they are super cute and yeah now i want every time i see these cards i want cookies seriously yeah <laughs> So now I'm just going to put, I put all of those together and I did pop up those cookies for some dimension. And now I'm just adding that top card panel to my card base. And I have another cute little shaker card. And I did stamp the inside of this Happy Valentine's Day, but I'm going to just put a piece of paper on top of it and add Happy Birthday and everything is good. Yeah, makes a perfect birthday card. So thank you so much for visiting with me today. I really appreciate it. I really do love these sets. They're great stamps that Jamie has in the Not Too Shabby Shop. Let's sell these out. That is my goal of the weekend is to sell these out for Jamie. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Um, leave a comment below. Tell me which of the cards you like the best or maybe you like them both. But please go check out the Not Too Shabby Shop and see all the wonderful content that she has there. Give her some love. It's a small business and she is a great person and there is a lot of big things gonna be happening on the horizon for Not Too Shabby. So thanks everybody, happy crafting, have a great weekend, and take care.